So Kitty asked and made a stupid ass mistake telling Caesar that ten thousand dollars was stolen from the shop and had Scott investigating every goddamn body. And it turns out that there wasn't any money missing and that they was accusing Melody of stealing the money for no fucking reason. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. All because of some stupid ass thing that Kitty did. And again, Kitty ain't nothing but a pretty face. And all I have to say is that I ain't never fuck with that bitch. Never like that bitch. All she really is is a cute face. She don't know what the fuck she's doing. Brand ambassador. Brand ambassador made a huge ass mistake talking about $10,000 was missing and caused all of this motherfucking confusion and all that bullshit. So with Melody quitting over the accusations... Caesar asked Sky, could she run the shop until they find another manager? Sky does not want to run the shop. She wants to go the fuck back home to Atlanta and get back home to her own house and run the shop down there. But Caesar says that he's about to go back to Atlanta and he ain't got time for that shit. He's going to run the shop in Atlanta. He wants Sky to run it. In New York. Sky ain't here for it. She 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 don't want to be in New York. She feel like she belongs in Atlanta. And that's where the fuck she want to be at. But because Caesar told her to be in New York. Her ass just going to be in motherfucking New York. So now Donna. She done broke into her own damn room. To get her own shit out. Because she was renting a room from a lady. And the woman claimed that she wasn't paying her rent. So she got the locks changed illegally so she had to get her shit out but she had to break in just to get her shit out so she was you know um got her shit and she's about to crash at a man house for a little while until she finds her own place you know what i'm saying and this whole situation with this roommate situation this whole thing right there is kind of it's mind-boggling. I don't necessarily know what to believe when it comes down to this damn situation. I honestly don't know what to believe, but it is what it is. We'll figure out what the fuck is really going on. Okay? We'll figure that out. So, later on, Scott and call out Kitty for being a dumb broad, which she is. She's dumb as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Because, girl, how do you make a $10,000 ass mistake like that? Like, how the fuck do you do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got all these people. We already know that Melody having problems with the IRS. You know, they after her ass and all of that. And you doing this? Girl, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now, girl. Like, it, it, that was really ridiculous. Like... It was crazy. And now Melody then got, she didn't get fired. Melody quit. Because she felt like, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, it's like, y'all motherfuckers want to accuse me of stealing the money because y'all know I need the money. But y'all want to accuse me of the motherfucking money. Y'all acting like, y'all was acting like Melody was on some shit like, forget it. Caesar, I don't want your money. Now, if you want to kick my ass, you just go ahead and get it over with. Because I'm sick of your shit. I need that money. That's what y'all acting like Donna was on. Y'all acting like Donna was on some damn set it off type of shit. She act like she was on some TT type shit. That's what y'all was trying to make it sound like. And she wasn't even on there. She ain't even steal nothing. So now y'all lost the manager for no reason. Do the kitty. But, you know, Sky said, you know, I really don't want to be here. I really want to be in Atlanta, but we're going to do some some ground rules. We're going to try to get this shit up right and tight so I can take my ass back home. Point blank the fuck, period. So, later on down the line, you know, we were introduced to Kevin last season. And he went out on a date with Young Bay, and we found out that Kevin was gay. Now, honestly, like I said, I always say this. My gaydar isn't always the best. A lot of the times, I don't know when someone's gay. A lot of the times, I don't know when someone is flirting with me. Sometimes I can pick up on it. Sometimes I can't. I'm still, for the last couple of years that I've been living in this world, I've been living in this whole little gay world for, what, for 10 years. Yeah, for a decade now. I, I first came out to a friend 
first first just accepted the fact that I was gay back in 2008 and it's now 2018 10 years later so I've been in this shit for 10 fucking years now okay 10 years and I still don't know when somebody gay or not still have no clue but it was something about Kevin last season when I seen him on my screen I just knew he was gay I don't know what it was about him I don't know why I felt like he was but I just knew he was gay I just knew he was so when he came out to be gay I'm like, I knew he was. I knew he was gay, but I don't know why. I just knew it. But they talk about his struggles and the fact that his father coming to New York to visit him. But he hasn't come out to his father. And, you know, he's about to be 30. And he doesn't want to be hiding this part of his life. And, you know, a lot of the times when you come out to your father, that's not always the easiest person to come out to. Your mother is usually the easiest person to come out to. But in this instance for me, and y'all know I always put personal shit into videos. For me personally, my daddy was the easiest one. My daddy accepted it much better than my mother did when I first came out. But you know, my mother had already accepted it by the time my daddy found out. My daddy didn't find out until like three, four years down the line. But you know, my, my father accepted it much better than my mother did. Um, So back in Atlanta, Caesar didn't come up there to a whole lot of mishaps. The credit card machine don't work. And now he got to call Sky to get the toilet fixed and the credit card machine fixed. Now, bitch, that's what you get. Because you should have just let her go back to Atlanta. And you could have stayed your monkey, monkey ass in Harlem and ran that shop. But you want to be grand and run your ass to Atlanta. That's why Scott cussed his ass out on that phone. I was so motherfucking tired because Scott cussed his ass the fuck out. She said, you gonna get the motherfucking toilet and credit card machine fix your motherfucking self until I can come back to Atlanta. You, that's right, Sky. Get his ass together. Because maybe if he would have sent your ass back to Atlanta like he was supposed to, he wouldn't be going through what the fuck he going through right now in Atlanta. Shit would have been done in Atlanta if he would have just let your ass come home. But no. But no, he had to think about his damn self. Bye, Caesar. So now, Sky goes to look for Melody and she finds out that Melody's sleeping in the RV. So she goes to meet up with Melody and she begs her and 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 begs her, and begs her, and begs her to come back to the Black Ink. And Melody, bruh, Melody ain't having it. She don't want to come back. She feel like, why should she have to come back after she was accused of being a whole damn thief? Why would I want to come back and nobody else, when Donna was accusing me of being a thief, nobody had my back. So why, would, why the fuck would I want to come back and work for them? And to be quite honest, I don't blame Melody. I'm not the biggest fan of hers, but at the same point in time, why would I want to come back when these motherfuckers accused me of stealing money? When Donna accused me of stealing money, nobody had my back. When in our reality, they should have been pointing the finger at Donna ass because she need the money just as much as Melody do because her ass ain't got nowhere to go either. So why they didn't point the finger at her? She needed the money just as well as Melody did, okay? Let's just be 100%. Donna ain't no crystal stale her damn self now. She needed the money too. She needed the coins just as well as Melody did. And like I said, I don't blame Melody for not wanting to come back to Black Ink. Because if that was me and everybody accused me of being a goddamn thief, I would not want to come back either. But Scott begged her and begged her and begged her. And Melody refused. She ain't trying to hear. Next thing you know, Donna then been, been put on blast for Help Me Howard. Because she wasn't paying her rent. She was damaging the house and all kinds of shit. And Donna said that's fake news. And when she see that bitch... She gonna whoop her motherfucking ass. So, back in Atlanta, Caesar trying to break up with Persuasion, fake booty ass. You know, the girl from the Bad Girls Club that ate the girl finger off. Yeah, her. Um, yeah, he trying to break up with her ass, and she just looking like a fake, ghetto, ratchet ass chili from T TLC. And he ain't even asked her to be his girlfriend, but she assumed that she just accepted it anyway, and he ain't said nothing. Caesar, boy, bye. And persuasion of all people. Anyway. So, Kevin and his daddy, they have the conversation about him being gay. And he pretty much said, look, I'm about to be 30, bro. I'm finna be 30. And I ain't got no time to be worried about what nobody else thinking of me and my lifestyle. I got to live for myself. I'm, I'm a grown-ass man. I got to do me. 
I'm going to be me regardless, and you ain't got to like it. But at the end of the day, I got to do me. He was like, you my son, and I love you. I may not agree with it, but I love you. And this is your life. It's not mine. It's your life. And that's, that's the thing. A lot of people, parents, preachers, whatever you want to call it, they got to understand, this is our life. I don't understand why when someone comes out the closet, everybody be up in arms about who the fuck they decide to fuck in their bedroom. It's not your business. It ain't your place. You ain't got to roll around in the sheets with me. The nigga that's with me got to roll around in the sheets with me. Not you. You don't have to worry about whether, whether or not you're going to get pumped or you're going to be the pumpy. I do. You don't have to worry about that. That's my business. So, I don't understand who somebody else bringing in their bedroom is such a big fucking deal to people. That's And that's why I don't get why, I, even though he said, although I might not agree with it, it's not my life. I hate it when people say they don't agree with it. It ain't for you to agree or disagree. It's my life. Fuck you agreeing or disagreeing. disagreeing. Fuck out of here. Next thing you know... Donna's landlord, where well, roommate decided that she wanted to show up, and Donna ran up the whoop, and, and and they got the whooping ass, baby. And it wasn't just Donna; the rest of the black and girls jumped in. And that's the way it's supposed to be. When one fight and somebody else jump in, y'all better get to it, okay? I'm I'm a firm believer in a one on one fight. I'm a firm believer in one on one. But if I'm having a one on one fight and another bitch jump in, I need everybody on my team that. I need people on my team to jump in too. If other bitches gonna jump in, that's the way. That's the way it works where I'm from. Where I'm from, if we scrapping one on one, if we got, if I got my team on this side and then they got their team on that side and we fighting the person on that and two or three people on that team jump in, oh my whole team gonna get involved, bitch. That's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, but one thing I can say about Donna, a lot of folks might not like Donna, and Donna might be on a lot of fuck shit. She on, and she might be ratchet, low class, and gutter, but as a motherfucker, and even trifling. But she about that life. She ain't scared of shit. That's why I fuck with her. But with that being said, y'all, this is my review on Black Ink Crew, and I'm out of here, y'all. See you later. Peace.